Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added for the CCNA course 200-125. This is section 4.10, Quality of Service Mechanisms. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how networking devices implement quality of service. There are three models for implementing quality of service. The first model is best effort model, when there is pretty much no quality of service. Not really an implementation of quality of service, it's not explicitly configured, used when quality of service is not required. The, then there we have a two other models, which one, one of them is integrated services, intserv, and the other one is differentiated services, diffserv. Diffserv is widely used, Inter integrated services it's mostly used within your network because you have to control like from the source to the destination you have to give priority to some packets now if if you go through wide area network you can't tell an isp what to do with your packets so they have to they will decide so insert or integrated services provide very high quality service to ip packets with a guaranteed delivery it defines a signaling process for application to signal to the network that they require special quality service for a period that the bandwidth should be reserved. However, InServe can severely limit the scalability of the network. So with InServe, the application already sends a signal to the network saying, okay, I need to send data and I want you to reserve this much bandwidth from the source all the way the path to the destination. Then we have a DiffServe, which provides highly scalable and flexibility in implementing quality service. Network devices recognize traffic classes and provide different levels of quality service to different traffic classes. So here we classify the traffic and depending on what class we give them a priority. Best way to explain these three types of quality services policy is like um, think about the integrated services. Is it, okay if you're like for example traveling from from London to New York there's three ways you're going to be treated. You can you can go with a private airplane which that is integrated services. Uh, with a private airplane, you, everything will be scheduled for you. Before you start going to the New York, the, the car is gonna wait to, for you at the door. When you're ready, go, to, insert, go in the car, get to the airplane, the airplane is ready for you, the pilot is ready, everything will be ready. For, and then you just take off, you get to the destination. That's integrated services. Differentiated services is like, okay, well, fine. Uh, you know, you have an airport, you can buy a ticket that is first, no more private, public now, uh, but you can buy a ticket that is a first class or regular class. Now, differentiated services, okay, well, if you bought the first class, first class seat, then they will take you to the first class area. You know, you're going to be treated a bit better. Um, Maybe the, the normal class is sold more tickets, you know, some people they might not even make the flight and so on. That's your differentiated services, which you, depending on the class, you there's a treat different treatment. Best effort metal is like, I don't know, some of these uh, cheap airplane tickets that you can just buy and then there's no seats either. So once you get to the airplane, you have your airplane, you have to run and get a seat. <laughs> Otherwise you might end up without a seat and you might even ma not make the flight. So private airplane, integrated services, different classes, differentiated services, best effort, no, not, not see the reserved. So best effort packet delivery and, and provides no guarantee. So with the best effort, just try to send the packets and hopefully they get there, but there's no guarantee. Appropriate for most purposes, especially if the quality service is not a concern. Benefits, the model is the most scalable Scalability is the only limited by bandwidth limits, in which case all traffic is equally affected. No special quality service mechanisms are required, therefore is the easiest and quickest model to deploy. Drawbacks or best effort are there are no guarantee of delivery. Packet will arrive whenever they can and in any order they possible, if they arrive at all. No packets have prefer preferential treatment. Critical data is treated as the same as a casual email is treated. Integrated services, quality service, is a multiple service model that can accommodate multiple quality service requirements. InServe provides a way to deliver the end-to-end -end quality service that real-time application require by explicitly managing network resources to provide QoS to specific user packet stream. 
sometimes called a microflow. InServe uses a connection-oriented approach inherited from telephone network design. So for example, this, this node here is about to send this, the data and it will do it will uh, announce or it will send the signal on the network that is ready to send this this important data and it does require for the whole network to s cut down or, or separate enough bandwidth for that data to go through so all the network has to say okay okay you're going to send data here is a, a path ready for you and you can go integrated services the application requests a specific kind of service from the network before sending data the application informs the network of its traffic pro uh, profile and requests a particular kind of services that can encompass its bandwidth and delay requirements. InServe uses the resource reservation protocol RSVP to signal the quality service needs of an application traffic along the sites in the end-to-end -to -end path throughout the network. The benefits are explicit end-to-end -end resource admission control per request policy admission control, authorization object, policy object, signaling of dynamic port numbers such as H323. Drawbacks, resources intensive due to the stateful architecture requirement to the continuous signaling, so the, like some of the uh, switches in the middle of the, of the, of the path, they will, reserve a, they will reserve a bandwidth, the data is not even there. Flow-based approach, not approaching to large implementations such as the internet resource intensive due to the stateful architecture requirements to continue signaling flow based approach not scalable to large implementation such as the internet differentiated services the differentiated services or diff serve for short quality service quality of service model specifies a simple and scalable mechanism for classifying and managing network traffic and providing quality service guarantees on modern ip networks DiffServe is not an end-to-end -end quality service strategy. DiffServe quality service is more scalable approach. Unlike InServe, DiffServe does not use signaling. Instead, DiffServe works on the provisioned quality service model, where the network elements are set up to the service multiple classes or traffic each with varying quality service requirement. DiffServe divides the network traffic into classes based on the business requirements. Each of the class can then be assigned a different level of service. As the packet traverses a network, each of the network devices identifies the packet classes and services the packet according to that class. Modern network primarily uses a different diff serve model, although inserve and RSVP is sometimes co-deployed. The benefits of diff serve are it's highly scalable and provides many different levels of quality. Drawbacks: no absolute guarantee of service quality requires a set of complex mechanisms to work in concert throughout the network. Avoiding packet loss. Packet loss is usually a result for of congestion on the interface. Drop TCP segments causes TCP session to reduce their window sizes. These approaches can prevent drops in sensitive application, increase link capacity to ease or prevent congestion, so increase the bandwidth, guarantee enough bandwidth and increase the buffer space to accommodate bursts of traffic from fragile flows, or prevent congestion by dropping lower priority packets before congestion occurs. So you kind of like look, before the start of congestion, you start dropping the packets already, so you will never have a congestion. Three categories of quality service tools that we have, classification and marking. Sessions of flows are analyzed to determine what traffic class they belong to. Once determined, the packet can be marked. Congestion avoiding tools. Traffic classes are allotted a portion of network resource as defined by quality service policy. The quality service policy also identifies how some traffic may be selectively dropped, delayed, or remarked to avoid congestion. The primary congestion avoidance tool is weighted random early detection and is used to regulate TCP data traffic in a band bandwidth efficient manner before tail drops caused by queue overflow occur. Congestion management tools. When the traffic exceeds availability network resources, traffic is queued to weight availability of resources. Common Cisco IOS based congestion management tools are included a class based weighted fair queuing and low latency queuing algorithm. Quality service tools, ingress packets, the packets in gray, are classified and their respective IP header is marked. 
we put the mark in okay then maybe that's a voice packet or that's a voice packet these are the video packet maybe these are the just normal data and this is a bulk traffic for example torrents and so on to avoid congestion packets are then allocated resource based on the defined policies so we take the the voice packet we put them in the front on the top then videos the normal data and then the bulk traffic and packets then are queued and forward out of the egress interface based on the defined quality service shaping and policing policy classification and marking before a packet can have a quality service policy applied to it the packet has to be classified classification determines what class of traffic packet or frame belongs to only after traffic is positively identified can policies be applied to it method of classifying traffic flow layer 2 and layer 3 include using interfaces acls or we can use class maps marking means that, that we are adding a value to the packet header devices receiving a packet they look at this field to see if it matches the defined policy marking should be done as close to the source as device as possible this establishes the trust boundary how traffic is marked usually depends on the technology the decision of whether to mark traffic at layer 2 or layer 3 or both is not trivial and should be made after consideration of the following points layer 2 marking of frames can be performed for non ip traffic layer 2 marking of frames is the only quality service option available for switches that are not ip aware layer 3 marking will carry the quality service information end to end marking at layer 2 802.1q standard is an IEEE specification for implementing VLANs in layer 2 switch network. The fields are inserted into the Ethernet frame following the source address field. So this is tagging. So for like a VLAN identification, so VLAN 10, VLAN 20, when you create a VLAN, put the port on that VLAN, the switch will mark this as a or tag this with what VLAN. In there, the three first bits are priority uh, marking. Three bits are used for class of services, A to D to one P user priority. Marking at layer three, IPv4 and IPv6 specify an 8-bit fields in the packet header to mark a packets. So in IPv4, we have a type of service here, the 8 bits. On IPv6, we have a traffic class that we can mark the packets. We can, we can mark like, for example, to be the backward compatible with layer two, just for three bits and the other uh, five bits are unused or we can just make it for layer 3 use the first 6 bits trust boundaries traffic should be classified and marked as close to its interface as technically and administratively feasible the, this defines a trust boundary so for example uh, IP phone can mark the traffic the priority or if we don't have an IP phone we can we can let the switch mark the traffic we never let the PC mark the traffic we just either one in the phone the switch access layer switch or we can put in a distribution layer switch will mark them trusted endpoint have the capability and intelligence to mark application traffic to the appropriate layer 2 class of service and on layer 3 differentiated service code point secure endpoints can have a traffic mark at layer 2 switch traffic can also be marked at layer 3 switch routers congestion avoidance tool are simpler they monitor network traffic loads in an effort to anticipate and avoid congestion at the common network and inter-network bottlenecks before congestion becomes a problem. The weighted random early detection algorithm allows for congestion avoidance of network interfaces by providing buffer management and allowing TCP traffic to decrease or throttle neck before bu buffers are exhausted. Shaping and policing. Traffic shaping and traffic policing are two mechanisms provided by Cisco IOS quality service software to prevent congestion. Traffic shaping retains excess packets in a queue and then schedule the excess for later transmission over increments of time. The result of traffic sh shaping is a smooth packet output rate. As you can see here, that's our traffic and then we are holding in the queue and then we are sending at the smooth in the smooth rate. Traffic policing propagates burst. When the traffic rates reaches the configured maximum rate, exceeds traffic is dropped exceeded excess traffic is dropped or remarked so as you can see for example that's that's on burst and with policing we just cut it thank you very much for watching please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been Astrid Krasnici bye bye